hello students our next topic is figured pq the figured pq is one of the important topic of 6.2 fabric structure so in this one what's the specialty of this figured pq we know that the designs like bedford code and belt so what's the specialty of bedford code in bedford code view the code effect or the ridges is formed in the lengthwise direction that is in the direction of war same way belt structure in the belt structure the ridges is formed in horizontal wise that means from one silhouette to another silhouette the ridges will form or ridges or rib will form right so this ridges passing from one silhouette to another silhouette in the case of weld that we have arranged in the order of in a figurative manner okay in a figurative manner if you are arranging the ridges in the fabric so we will get the effect of figured pq so what is a figured pq fabrics in this one a pq fabric consists of fine slack plain face fabric and tight back coarse fabric the design is produced by the stitching ends interweaving with the plain face fabric and form a flat or sunk or bound ground effect the unbound portion forms raised or embossed or puckered figure so in this case so in the fabric surface there is a plain face fabric is forming by the plain ends that is interlaced with the plain Worked to form a face fabric. So with that face fabric, what will happen? There is a stitching warp will be there, or stitching end will be there. That stitching end will come to interlace with the face fabric, not a pick. Declana here the difference is that the stitching end come to the face side of the fabric for interlacing with the face fabric so what will happen the stitching area will form the ground means that stitch wherever the stitching is takes place that area come down that will form the down and the loose face fabric area that will rise from the foundation of the fabric so that will form like a puckered effect or embossed effect okay So here you can see the figure. Suppose this is the plain end that is unless the plain weft. But here you can see the stitching end. Here the stitching end is this wild color threads. Okay. That thread what will happen? That coming to the face side of the fabric and interlaced with the face fabric. Due to that, what will happen? This area, wherever the stitching is takes place, that kept in a tight condition so what will happen the boundary area will in a stitched condition or in a down condition and the plain face fabric that is kept in loose condition that is raised from the foundation of the cloth so what is the area this area that means the loose fabric is forming that area is called figured area wherever the stitching is takes place that area is down i mean uh, the in a tight condition that it is called ground okay so in this case clearly we can see the ground area is sorry the figure area is formed by the interlacement of plain end with the plain pick and the ground area is formed by the interlacement of stitching end with the face 
fabric okay so we will see so here two series of warp is there that is plain warp and stitching warp plain warp and stitching warp arranged in the ratio of 2 is to 1 that means 2 plain is to 1 stitching end the arranging in a manner that one plane, one stitching, one plane. In this manner, warp is arranging. So, what is the tension variation? The plane warp is kept in loose tension and the stitching warp is kept in a tight condition. So, what about the weft? There will be two series of weft. That is, plane weft and wadding weft. So, the ratio is 2 is to 2. Plain weft and plain warp forms plain face fabric. Stitching warp interweave with the plain face fabric to form ground effect and stay back in other places interweaving with the wadding peak. That is called uh, the stitching and interlaced with the wadding peak. That particular wadding peak is known as fast wadding to form a coarse plain fabric at the back side. So, in uh, face fabric is the plain end interlaced with the plain weft, back segment fab, uh, one course, one background is forming that is due to the interlacement of stitching end with the fast wedding pick. Additional wedding picks are employed to act as loose wedding picks between the coarse plain back fabric and the loose plain back fabric. That means if you want to improve the originess or if you want to improve the bulkiness or bulginess you can add more wadding loose wadding picks in between plain face fabric and the coarse plain back fabric okay so <clears throat> this is the, the basic views of figured pq okay basic views of figured pq sometimes in exam question may ask that okay draw the basic diagram of figure dpq so this is the basic diagram so in this one one is ground and another one is figure what is the ground ground is forming by the interlacing of ah uh, stitching end with the plain face fabric that area the fabric will form the ground so wherever the stitching end is not interlacing with the Plain face fabric, that area is called figure area. Already we have discussed. So you can see the plain end. So then uh, warp is arranging plain stitching, plain, plain stitching, plain. Two is stone ratio. Weft is arranging plain, plain, loose wadding and fast wadding. Again, plain, plain, loose wadding and fast wadding. What about the design you can see? First we will mark the plane end interlaced with the plane peak in a plane order. So plane end up, down, again plane end up, down. Okay. Then here down, up, down, up. Here also up, down, here also down. Okay. Then stitching end. Sorry. After that, we know that whenever inserting the wadded peak, all the plane ends will be in a raised condition. So, all the plane ends we will mark in a raised condition. Okay, this is over. Then, what about the stitching end? Stitching end interlaced with the three total four peak. In the case of four peak stitch, this stitching end will raise over the four peaks. Uh, particular in a figurative order. Okay, the stitching end will interlace with the face fabric in a figurative order. In this case, what will happen? The stitching end will raise over the first three picks. Then, in the case of fourth pick, what will happen? That is a fast wadded. In the case of fast wadded, that will work in a manner of plain order, like this one. If you, if you are observing the fast water structure for, for the fast water peaks, what will happen? The stitching end 
for the fourth pick that is working in a plane order up down figure portion also you can see up down okay so where is the difference between this ground and figure the difference is only at the place where the the stitching ends behavior okay in ground end the stitching end is interlaced with the plain face fabric and in figurative area the stitching end only interlaced with the fast wadded pick okay this is the main difference so while observing these two figure we know that for the first three peaks both face sorry or both ground and figure area only the stitching end will act differently okay so to control that thing to control stitching end we will use the jacquard okay for controlling stitching end we will use the jacquard for controlling plane ends so if you are observing ground and figure the plane end is same in the case of both ground and figure so to control the plane end we will use the heel shaft so in general three treadle we will use one for the jacquard and two for the heels here we required two heels heel down heel to to control we required two treadles accordingly okay so what are the things i have told that is the i'm just giving the same thing okay so it's a fabric view once again we'll see Okay, here also you can see okay this is the plain fabric this is the figurative area where the stitching is takes place that area is known as ground area this is one of the very good figure you can see wherever the stitching is takes place that area the fabric will depression will takes place or the stitching due to the stitching there there i will takes place but in other area the loose plain fab fabric is there loose plain fabric that is raised from the foundation so it will look like some embossing okay like this method we can create very attractive design so this is a jacquard setup first before that ah uh, okay the first jacquard set we can see this is the straight tie straight rough jacquard with the heel so we know that the heel shaft is sorry the jacquard is used to control the stitching end okay so the first two the first uh, harness line so through harness line the stitching end is drawing likewise all the stitching end is drawing through the respective harness and uh, at the front side of the harness we will kept two heel shaft heel shaft 1 and heel shaft 2 through which we will draw the plain ends so the stitching end is drawn through the harness and plain end is drawn through the heel shaft so what about the draft so we know that ground and stitching ground in the case that is the plain end so first plain end that is from first heel shaft second one is first harness line then third that is the plain end that is the second heel shaft then fourth one also plain end that is from the first heel shaft then fifth that is the second harness like in this manner we will draft draft the threads through the respective heels and the harnesses so how to make the design you can see <coughs> here i have selected the grid graph size 16 into 12 grid graph size 16 into 12 so with this grid graph what 
could be the final design size. The final design size will be in the case of four pick stitch. Here we have studied this figure. Okay, this figure I have shown is the based upon the four pick stitch. For your exam point of view, you have to only concentrate on the four pick stitch. In some other method also there are four pick stitch, five pick stitch, six pick stitch. What is the difference? Only that in this case, in the case of six pick stitch, what will happen? Maybe four plain end and loose bladder and fast bladder. So total six pick will be there. So over the six pick, the stitching end will stitch. So here four pick stitch. So design we are making based upon the four pick stitch. So accordingly, what is the size? So here the size is 16 into 12. If I want to make the size of 16 12, what could be the final design size? Huh. Here what is the 16? 16 stitching end. Okay. So here the jacquard we are using to control stitching end. So the stitching end behavior will be the uh, based upon the gate graph. So accordingly 16 stitching end I have taken for the gate graph and a 12 pick for the gate graph size. So based upon that one, so what will be the final size? What is our warp end ratio? Warp is we are selecting 2 is to 1. That means for one stitching end to plain end we have to select. So for one stitching end to plain end, likewise for 16 stitching end 32 plain end we have to select. So I think uh, the final size will be 48 end will be there. What about the picks? In the case of 12 pick stitch, sorry. Extremely sorry, in the case of four pick stitch, ah, here if you are having 12 means 12 into 4, 48. The size will be 48 into 48. So accordingly here what I will do, the size I have made into 48 into 48, then in this marking like plain end stitching plain stitching, plain stitching, plain stitching, plain stitching in this order, we will mark it. What about the VFTA marking? Plain, plain, loose water, fast water, plain, plain, loose water, fast water, plain, plain, loose water, fast water. In this manner, VFTA is also I have marked. Okay. Then one more important thing you have to keep in your mind that while drawing the guild graph, Okay, while drawing the gate graph, you have to ensure that this design should be in a one type of plane order. Means I am telling like this one. Suppose here, here is empty, that means down. Suppose I am uh, assuming that this is up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Here also down, up. Next, up. So, wherever if you are marking, suppose if you want to mark it here, so you have to just check that one. Up, down, up, down, up. All right. So, here you can mark the design. So, accordingly, you have to create the base gate graph. Clear? Is any up, either mark here, either mark. Here also you are putting mark. So, that will be the row. Okay. The gate graph that should follow the the plain order behavior throughout the things. What is the uh, reason behind that one? We know that for the fast divided peak, okay, for the fast divided peak, here you can see, for the fast divided peak, the stitching end will work in a plain order irrespective of ground and figure. That means suppose here up, this is down, here also it should. Definitely it will come up, it is down, the down, next up, next down, next up, okay. That's why 
in the grid graph you should draw the design in a manner that the order of flowing should be in a plain order so we can see so accordingly first what we will do first mark the <laughs> plane end with the plane peak in a plane order so that plane behavior that you have to mark it then all the plane end will be raised over the loose product and first order that will be different the marking you are using and you have mark that marking for all the loose product and the first order the plane end will be in a raised condition then what about the fourth peak that is for uh, then design area then design we will see suppose in this case here first stitching it is down second also down third stitching it is in a up condition here in one up means here one up means means in the first pick in one pick if there is an third end is up means the third end will rise for four pick you can see here first stitching end is down this also down then third end third end is up that means here that is raised over the ah uh, raised over the four picks okay so likewise wherever the design is there accordingly on down next also up so next down next also four pick the stitching in this raised over four pick up likewise wherever the four pick stitch is there that area for over the four pick you have to put your mark okay then after you see that for the last loop fast divided pick irrespective of ground and uh, figure area the stitching end has to interlace with the fast divided pick in a plain order okay so here the, you can see here one is up so next one is down next is up next is down next up down up down up down up down up likewise we have to mark the fourth pick area so clear so accordingly you can see this is the figured area na? wherever the you no know, stitching is there that is called a figured area wherever the stitching is there that area is called a ground area so in this area the figured area the stitching it is working in a plain order so how we have to operate the loom means jacquard having three the two uh, total three treadles will be there so accordingly what will happen ha huh. first we will press the jacquard number means uh, jacquard treadle with the first design card okay so accordingly the stitching end wherever it is raised that will be in a raised condition based upon the cut mark the stitching end will be in a raised condition at the same time we will operate the heel number 1 treadle okay so two treadle we have pressed so accordingly first pick we have inserted then for the second pick heel number 2 we will raise but we will keep the design card as it is that means treadle is we is pressed as it is we are not changing the card okay so second heel so the second pick the heel number 2 is raised then for the third and third pick heel number 1 and 2 is raised that means two heel we will press I means the treadle we will press together along with the jacquard that means then also the card is not changing so here you can see for the design card is working for the first three pick in the same manner 
means that card will stay for the design card is stay for three pick that means what are the three pick two ground pick and one loose bladder pick these three picks the design card will work as it is then for the fourth pick again we will press the heel number one and two and changing the jacquard card that means here we will use the plain card okay that plain card should be in a order that it should follow the behavior that means <coughs> this uh, area for the first three pick if the stitching end is raised then the fourth pick also it should be raised condition so accordingly that plain order card we have to select it that means up down up down up down that card we have selected okay then again for the fifth pick hill number one is raised then jacquard is with a second design card then for next pick the hill number two is raised then again with the second design card then next two picks hill number one and two is raised and for the fourth pick only the plain card that means down up down up that card will work clear so for first three picks the same design card will work and for the fourth pick only the uh, plain card will work okay so in this <coughs> you can see so there is a difficulty so here what jacquard we are using here the principle is that bottom closed shoulder principle we are using that means all the stitching end and the ground end is kept at the bottom level so wherever it is required we will raise it so that's why we have to use you know the, we have to be bound to operate three treadles together in the case of loose water picks and also for the faster water picks you know? so there is a difficulty is there to overcome this difficulty we can use special open shed method we can use it so in this method what we will do the stitching end is kept in bottom level that means the jacquard that uh, uh, single lift single stitch jacquard that is formed generally bottom closed shed principle so accordingly bottom closed shed principle is forming in this area so stitching end will lie at the bottom level in the top level means the heeled we will kept at the top that means with the help of an elastic okay not a jack and lamb borrowed lever here for the top closer shift principle we have to use the elastic band in there suppose elastic band or spring uh, through that one we will uh, connect the top step of the that two heel okay so in general so what will happen so for the for first pick that means for plain pick heel number uh, sorry uh, jacquard treadle and uh, heel number one if you want to raise so then you have to uh, down the heel number two so the condition is reversing here okay so here jo, just go down karna hai, that treadle we have to operate it in the case of open shed so what will happen suppose first pick that is the uh, jacquard one and uh, heel number two i am operating together for second pick same heel uh, the jacquard treadle as it is i am kept in, uh, kept pressed and heel number two i am pressing then for the third pick for the loose pattern pick i don't want to operate the heels treadle okay that should be in raised condition that's why not operating only the uh, jacquard treadle i am kept pressed then for fourth pick again i am pressing jacquard treadle with the new plain card so accordingly uh, that will work 
So it's a very very uh, simple, easy and simple topic. I hope you uh, you have understand. Okay, thank you. If there if you have any doubt, please keep contacting.